Online stores have products. Products live in one or many categories. Products have attributes. But wait, the size of a shoe is different than the size of a t-shirt. But this t-shirt is now sold out. A wild product appears and wants to be front and center on the new arrivals page. Oh, and all this should be manageable for a non-developer. There you have it, the nature of an online store. This is the reason why a lot of people agree to give 3% of their income to Shopify. But that's not for us. The other option is to use a headless CMS. And setting up a Next.js site to a CMS is a great skill to have. So today I will connect Next.js to the CMS of one entry. This video is in fact also sponsored by one entry. One entry aims to be a user-friendly CMS that is a great fit for online stores. Personally, I enjoyed the NPM package they provide with TypeScript support. I also enjoyed the custom attribute system of the CMS. One entry is free to try without a credit card, so after you get set up, you can start your first project by using a promo code that you get in an email after sign. Worth mentioning is that new modules for users, orders, payment systems, deliveries and notifications will be available very soon. Now I will show you in detail how I connect Next.js to this CMS. And then I will speed code some nice UI components from Acetermly UI. Let's get started. We'll create a new project. We'll call it shoe commerce. Nice. Okay, our project is created. And if we enter it, we can go to access and then open up the cloud. And the login credentials is sent to me by email. So let's go to pages, we'll create a usual page. And this will be the home page. Right, done. Let's create another page. A catalog page for products. Let's call this one all products. And I will do the same for our two product categories, which will be sneakers and boots. All right, now we have our pages. So now let's start creating products. So before we create the products, we actually want to define our custom attributes that we want to add to every product. So we'll go to settings, attributes, and we'll call it shoe attribute set. And it's for products. And we'll open the settings on this attribute set. And we want to have a title. We'll do a string. And we'll add a description string. We want a price, and that should be a float. We want to have an image as well. And finally, we want to have a color. And since we want to maybe group the products by color, we don't want to have that just as a string or just a random text field we want to have a set of colors that we can choose from so we'll make color into a list and we'll edit this list we'll probably have black shoes we'll have pink shoes and we'll have purple shoes this list should of course be longer but this is fine for what we're building right now so now we have our attribute set for shoes. So now we can actually create the shoes. So we'll add a product to all products. Our first product is the Air Jordan. We'll go to categories. This will be part of all products, but also sneakers. And then we'll pick our attribute set for shoes. All right, so we are done with our first product. Now I just have to repeat this process for the rest of the products. So 
So now we can open up the categories, get an overview and see that we've placed them in the correct category pages as well. The final thing we're going to create in the CMS is the menu. So if we go to menu, we'll add a new menu and we'll call it main. Let's edit the menu and let's enable all the pages that we want to have in our menu, which should be all of them. As easy as that. So that should be everything for the data that we need in the CMS. So now we can move on to actually consuming this data and start to build out the storefront. Before we leave the CMS, we must not forget to bring with us our app token. So if we go to settings, app tokens, let's create our app token. We'll copy it. And we'll put this in our environment variable so that we can fetch data from the CMS. And now we create our next app with TypeScript, ESLint, and Tailwind. No source directory, app router, yes. We create our env.local file. And inside the app directory, we'll add a folder called one entry. The one entry SDK. So it's just an NPM package that helps us to fetch data in a cleaner way. All right, so now we're ready to start implementing the API helper file. So we'll import one entry and then we'll call that function with our cloud name and also pass our token, which is from the environment variable. And this API object, we can destructure pages, products, and menus. And now we're ready to create the helper functions for fetching these different data types. We want to get the pages, we want to get the menu, get all products, get products related to a page, and get product by ID. And we'll fix all these any types really shortly. For some of these typings, we can use the built-in types, but for our products, for example, we have the custom attributes that we will have to add types for ourselves. So the game plan is to fetch all the data inside our page. Then we'll create a dummy client component where we will console log all the data. And that way we get those console logs in the browser console and we can easily inspect the types and dig deeper into the objects. Easier than we would if it was a server log where it would end up in our terminal. Now let's clear out everything inside main. Now let's create our client logger component. Alright, so our API calls are all successful. We have four pages and the first page is our home page. That is a usual page. And the other three are our category pages or catalog pages as they're called here. If we look into the products, uh, surprisingly we have 12 products. But the reason for that is that the product will list in each category when we do the get all products API call. So if we would do get product by category page, then we would get just the three products related to that category. And the main menu, we have four menu items and that seems correct too. So I think a good next step would be to tie the category pages together with next routing. And when we're on a category page, we only fetch those products that are related to that page using the get products by page URL API call. So in our app directory, we create a dynamic route called category. Let's copy this page in here. And 
here we get params. So now what should happen is that we will go to slash sneakers that will become our dynamic route and next we'll pass it to us as this params.category here. We will take that and send to the API and the API should return only the products on the category page whose URL matches what we pass in here. So that should be all our sneakers. So let's try it out. Yeah, so we only have three products and let's make sure it's the sneakers. So let's go into our custom attributes and the title is Nike Air Jordan. So that is a sneaker. So that looks great. So if we continue down in the routing, we can make another dynamic page for product ID. We'll copy this page again. And now we should use the function get products by ID. So this function expects an int. And this prop expects to be a list. So let's try this out. Now we will navigate to slash sneakers and then slash some product ID. So let's see what is a valid product ID. So we could do one. So slash sneakers slash one. So now we just have the one product with ID one. So there we have the routing fixed. Now let's fix our typings. So if we look at this get pages function, it returns a promise of I pages entity array. So that's an easy fix. And the menu returns I menus entity. But for the products, it's a tiny bit worse, but it should be manageable. So the products is I products entity. If we look into this type, you can see that it does not have, it does have attribute values, but it's just a very general type record string any. And if we look in our browser, we can see that these attribute values, they are the custom attributes that we defined. So we need to make a union with a custom type that describes this. So let's clean this up a bit. All right, so I think that should be our type. Now we should have nice autocomplete with our custom attributes. Now we should start to work on our header component. and add it to our layout. And our header will definitely need the main menu. So let's make a loop of our menu and create links. So we're looking for a type that looks like this. So apparently we used the wrong type. And this I menus pages is what we're looking for. So let's change our API to use I menus pages. And now we get page URL. To get the title, we can use the localized infos and then menu title. So let's fix our type. All right, so let's see what we got. Okay, so we got our pages, home, all, boots, and sneakers. And if we click them, yeah, we come to the sneakers page. So that's great. It's 
So now we should loop out some products on our category page. So now we have some links to our different pages by looping out the menu. And when we're on a category page, we have some products and they link to the product page. So the basic routing is done. Now we should check out the cool component library of Aesternity and pick some cool components to make this look good. I think this title is pretty cool. That could work as a category title and then have the products underneath. A nav bar menu, that sounds interesting. Okay, so it's this one here. Yeah, this one is perfect. So this could be our menu and this could be our products. Oh, this. This is perfect for us. This could be our product card in the product listing. And I think we could even use this view for, for the cart, but instead of a grid, it would just be one product per row. So to install this navbar, we need to install some dependencies and then we just copy paste this source code. So after some work, we've successfully looped out the menu items in the hovered link style and our product items in the product item style. Now that we have a proof of concept for the menus, what I would like to do is take this menu and move it to when you hover the hamburger. And then I would like to take this big menu, keep it in the middle, but make it on some attribute category like the color of the shoe or something like that. Maybe have some color dots up here that when you hover a color you see only shoes with that color. And then I would like to take this grid menu, make it single column and use it for the cart and of course change cart to a cart icon. That would be my next steps for the header. So let's first move this menu to the hamburger. Now let's focus on the center menu in the top. Here I want to create some color buckets, place the right products in the right bucket and then showcase a color dot per color. And when you hover the color dot, it will show a menu like this, but only with the shoes in that color category. Alright, now that we have the color menu working, let's shift our focus towards the cart.
All right, now we have a decent looking card. So now let's focus on getting a nice header on every page and then listing out the products using that beautiful product card. It's coming together. Now let's look for the product card. All right, so things are starting to come together. We have a pretty nice looking e-commerce page that is totally driven through a CMS. I will do some cleanup in the code. I will tweak some UI and then I'll make the cart come to life. And the final code will be available for you in the description. So now let's jump to the finalized site and have a look around. All right, so I think this is where I will stop. I have a working cart and a pretty interesting looking site. So I hope you really enjoyed this video and maybe learned something new. Maybe it was a little bit of a different style than you used to, but hopefully you still enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next video.